The, you see, because Elf Man told her that she had to not let him escape with that object. Yeah. So even if she doesn't quite know what it is, that is more reason to look and see what it That's is. That's true. Yeah, that is true. It's like because you don't even know what it is. What you mean? Exactly. Yeah, yeah like you told me to chase him, and it was just a tomahawk. Like what? <laughs> what? Huh. Is this a magic evil tomahawk that will awaken yeah. Sauron? Like, is this so Sauron's just... tomahawk? Was um, he an avid tomahawk thrower? Uh, yeah. Uh, Did he tie a rope to it for maximum effectiveness? Elfman is pretty familiar with this thing, and he managed to hold this without even realizing. And like, not noticed. Beyond, and so you're like, where's the real one? Waldrick has <laughs> it. And he's yeah. gone back to the watchtower, he's activated the sword, and he's plunged it into this this thing. Is this big old slot on the floor underneath the, uh, the little statue that depicts the, the sword as a key. Which brings us to, I think I should just summarize <laughs> the whole event first, and then we can yeah, spend the next ten yeah. years talking about this, because it's <laughs> unreal. Mm -hmm. He stabs it down. It opens up a little spillway the, the, for a dam, essentially, for water. It piles out, and it all flows down uh, a big, the big old trench that we saw them building this whole time. And the trench ends in, a, in, in an opening to a volcano that is dormant, and it plows all the water in there, which activates the volcano. It erupts I like get. crazy. And uh, it's, it seems like it's there's some level of supernatural shit going on here. It's like turning the world to darkness as well. Like the ground is even becoming, you know, I think we're going Mordor mode is the idea. You guys remember Mordor? It's quite dark. It's I remember Mordor. I clapped. I clapped when I saw um, Mordor. Uh, there's a couple of other things that happen as well, uh, including but not limited to the pyroclastic flow, Adar escaping, a conversation between Elendil and his son. We'll get to all those things. We are now going to just discuss... This insane shit. Uh, um, as best we can, I suppose. Where to start? Uh, this kind of just... It recontextualizes everything we've seen up to this point in terms of uh, what Adar's plan was, which is, I need to build up my orcs, capture some humans, dig up that trench ready to open up the, the dam to activate Mount Doom, and to do that, I'm going to need to get the hilt, of which I don't know where it is at all, I just hope I'll eventually find it, and then put it Presumably he knew he was going to put it here the whole time, or did he discover that this episode? I'm not sure. But that is the plan in full. Is that key all meant to be the Eye of Sauron? <laughs> Probably. Who knows? I don't know why the elf, when they pulled all the trees and stuff away from the wall, didn't immediately just see this. Because it's pretty obvious. Yeah, it's pretty... And, and as was said, it's if you fill that yeah. with any old thing, it's going to fuck up the whole plan. Fill it up with concrete, man. This is evil shit. If you drop a whole bunch of little stones in there until it fills it all the way up. Yeah. You know? Like, that's it. You've, you've won. Just, you've stopped wait, them. Just take hammers and break the whole mechanism. Yeah. yeah, you could also do that. Unless it's all immune to being hit by anything, like all the evil stuff is for some reason. I, I still don't know why he's made this complex key to begin with. Because it's not like he didn't... Even... Because no, if it was just a lever, you could be like, well, anyone could set it off, so he wanted a locking mechanism. But he wanted this to happen to the area. So surely it doesn't matter who set it off, it didn't need protecting, it wasn't meant to be top secret or anything. It just seems really over-engineered for what could have just been a button. Well, so we have to imagine that back when they were having their big old war, was Mordor, or sorry, Mount Doom not, like... It goes dormant, and then they're like, we'll need to reactivate that one day, and we're going to do that by piling loads of water in there. So what's the best way to do that? And it's like, well, there's a stream over here. If we, if we jam it up, dam it up, I mean, um, and then release it all, and we, we, our future generations dig a big trench, we can line it all up to go straight in. There you go, that's great. We'll, we'll design this mechanism to lock it all up and unlock it, and we'll make the key this big old sword. I'm just sitting here like, so if you have an army of orcs, and you're actually near the coastline, sort of, I mean, judging from the Numerians, you're telling me then that with all the work the orcs did, they could have just had loads of buckets, right? And just sort of tossed all the water in there? Tossed them in. <laughs> I don't know. Is that reasonable or not? I don't know. Uh... There is actually um, an article, I don't remember which website it's doing it, discussing the science of this scene um, and whether it's actually possible. Uh, buckets wouldn't have worked because there's not enough water in there and it probably would have evaporated. But Vaporized before it even hit, yeah. Yeah, so you need to get 
a trench going down, I think it's three kilometers or four kilometers deep, which is where the magma chamber is. And you'd need a lot of water in there, which would then create an awful lot of steam, which would create an eruption of sorts. And it just happened in real life occasionally. But steel, uh, steam eruptions are like very different from normal volcanic eruptions. They happen all the time. It would happen at really once, pays attention right? to them. Yeah, and they don't spew magma everywhere. They don't create dark clouds yeah, that for all of history. It wouldn't, None of it that. wouldn't be this a volcano magical. where magma is just, or lava is oozing out of it cons uh, constantly. You know, it would just be like, oh, it explodes because of the steam and the pressure, and then, yeah. and then it's done. And the but volcanoes if you are do this go periodically anyway, because there's always a buildup of pressure in a volcano, and it just sort of occasionally just spurts a little bit of it out, and then it's fine again. But you wouldn't be able to do it with buckets, is the point. You would need you would need a trench. It would need to be a lot of water. But then again, it this sort of poses the, the question, you know, who built the dam in the first place? And then if it wasn't the elves who dam, built the dam, might they have asked why the dam had been the built? But if you see, yeah, because yeah, you have to have not just the dam being built, being built with this mechanism, because the mechanism is clearly integral to the whole design. Yeah. It, yeah it's not which... just an addition. It has to be done with that. You know, it needs to be built with that in mind. Which means it can't have been the elves who built it, because the elves would have had no reason to build it with the mechanism leading water into the volcano. Correct. Which means they would surely have asked, well, what is the, what is the purpose and point of this dam ex even existing anyway? And is it not perhaps notable that this massive trench that we would definitely have spotted from our watchtowers seems to be leading directly to this dam? Is that they not didn't a little spot bit that, suspicious? Dude. They didn't spot anything. In fact, because, I yeah. don't know who... Yeah, and he wasn't talking uh, to... All no. Elfman reported to, or who the other people reported to, whoever that was, it doesn't exist in this show. They're like elf command. Is this supposed to be Gilgalad? Elf command. Um, I don't no, know. I don't, they, recalls they, them. They're like, oh, we've been recalled. Yeah, but it's like, by who? And why don't those people care about you for the fact that you, all of them are dead now except Elfman? Also, the Gilgalad is as far away from this place as it's possible to be, because Lindon is far south, the far northwest. And then you have the Southlands, which are far southeast. It's like the entirety of Middle Earth is the distance. And you should have, you'd think, well, you, you do and the law have, but you should even in this universe have like multiple different elvish kingdoms, factions, fortresses, outposts, whatever, between the far uh, northwest and the far southeast that you would be reporting to. It, it doesn't really make a huge amount of logistical sense to have them reporting straight back to Gilgalad and Lyndon because you couldn't get further away from where you are here. The reason why they get recalled is because Gilgalad sends uh, Galadriel away, and then he says, that's it, the war's over, the there's war's peace in our time, it. and then that cancels everything around the whole area. So, and so nobody whether he cared. got passed down the chain, they it was never, his decision. The nobody cared that they never came back. Like, nobody no. checked. No yeah, <laughs> we, we're just going to have to accept that that's a thing that happened. Because we see Gilgalad later, and the elves later, and they just don't ask, there's no inquiry, there's no investigation. They're like, yeah, whatever. So I guess the done. writers just didn't think about it. Um, this... I just don't know why, if you made a big locking mechanism and a dam and all this sort of magical keys and stuff, why you wouldn't have just dug the tunnels at the same time? Why you needed a load of orcs to come in and finish your plan for you? Yeah, why didn't you have secret tunnels underneath that it could... Like, you they just have to, well. like you have to remove the door or mine a boulder or something, and then it opens up the tunnels that you dug ages ago. Because that shit will last. Yeah, it's really weird that they built all this knowing that our future generations will have to build an absurdly huge trench that's incredibly long to make this work. Like, uh, Which is huh. the more difficult part than a yeah. dam. As well, you say that, but the thing is, if you're Adar and you're like, right, we can build that dam, game. we can, oh, sorry, we can, we can uh, dig that trench and we can unlock that dam. The hardest component of all of this from his perspective, I guess you were talking about from when they set this whole thing ages ago, I was just going to say like, they have no idea where the hilt is up until it's quote unquote found. And it's like, so that could have been anywhere. Literally anywhere. Building that whole trench yeah, would have been really could, awkward they... if they never found the hilt, huh? Breaking down the dam. Yeah, it all though. relies on them finding <laughs> the hilt. <laughs> yeah, I guess they could break down the dam. Is there anything stopping them from doing it's that? Like is it magical rock. stone that can't, I, you know, I don't know. I assume you could just chisel it away. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, uh, you know how in like the Ents, they up the dam yep. the two towers you know like it, they could go for the supports of the dam and yeah, they didn't have to get a spooky sword or... that's true the spooky sword just was i don't know i guess it's nice to be looking for it it's really great if you do find it it does make that 
work easier. And so, yeah, everything really did hinge on this hilt. Um, we'll have to assume that Adar understood the entire system well ahead of time. And so this is in service of creating a world for his orcs to be happy in, right? That's the idea? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, Ash goes into the sky, blocks out the sun, then they can roam right. around. So, uh, he finally defeats the villagers, gets a hold of that hilt, and he's like, no, I'm too clever. I'm going to hand it to Waldrig and get him to enact the plan while I will become the decoy. I thought that was kind of strange. I thought maybe you would want to give it to your like most trusted person, which I doubt is the guy you met yesterday. Um, How does he have time? Because if I remember that scene correctly, he comes out of the tavern, Adar comes out of the tavern, and Baldrick is just standing there, and Adar has time to say, I need you to do something for me. But then the Numenorians attack. So how in, in between the, the horse charge and the horse arrival... Does he have time to say, take this hill, go to this specific place, find this thing, this is what it looks like, this is what you do with the sword, this is where you put the sword, this is how you twist the sword, and this is what will then happen. Does he, he have time to do all of that before the horse is hit? I think he would have recorded an explanation on his mobile phone and handed it to him and said, play this video I when just... you get there. <laughs> that, would have, that would have handled it. But yeah, and then you have to believe that Waldrick managed to sneak past everyone and everything to get there. Um, I suppose if he just sprinted into yeah. the forest, that's probably likely, I guess, I don't know. But he's like he's the most noticeable of the villagers, uh, to the other villagers. Like the this other is villagers, the guy who yeah. led the revolt. So the other villagers would surely have been on the lookout, or well, they'd at least spotted um, him there and maybe said. Maybe that's the one part I would give them some level of benefit of the doubt because most of the villagers are I currently so. stuck in the tavern. Meanwhile, if he's just uh, yeah, yeah. if he comes across as a random villager running into the forest to the Numenorians or the orcs, I don't think either side will care that much, right? Let's be like, whatever, fuck that guy. Mm -hmm. Um. And even if the villagers saw Baldrig running off into the forest, I doubt they would be like, we must stop him! They'd probably be like, ah, oh, that piece of shit. Anyway, moving on. Because, like, yeah. Oh, he's running like a coward, yeah. So, it's just un real that old man Waldrig, with his stupid little spooky <laughs> hilt, is the reason Mount Doom exists. <laughs> it's pretty insane, isn't it? I can't. The and this, is, this is like... Jackson films. It's all because of, it's all because of Baldrig. He is... He is the key to everything. The key to Mordor. <laughs> they create fucking hell. <laughs> and so yeah, none of the fucking plan makes any sense at all in terms of when they would have set this up originally and how they've approached it at this point. It's incredibly lucky that everything rolled out the way that it did. I, um, and, they, and then you start to have these little bonus questions like, did Waldrig know how important that hilt was? And if he did, why the hell did he let Theo hang on to it when Theo's not even like, you know, in... Drinking the Kool Aid. He's not. He's not in the. He can't vouch cult. for him. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't. He see it. Didn't Theo show it to him in like episode three? Was he, it? Well, he's, I'm he sure explicitly he... says like you took it from my barn. Like he he knows that Theo's got it and that he took it. But then, so we have to assume that he doesn't know really how important it is because otherwise he would never have let Theo keep Just it. Just that it is important just that it for is important some that alone should have been enough reason for him to not let him keep it if, you know yeah it doesn't work can't work no matter how how they uh and then there was a problem i don't know if it's the last stream or yesterday's stream but well you know when he goes to he leads the revolt and then he just asks theo to go with him rather than stealing the sword first and taking it off with him like, none of that makes any sense yeah, but you can't let things not making sense get in the way of a good story. <laughs> in the way of Rings of Power, especially. I'm gonna soldier on. And what yeah, is their uh, plan here? Why are they just running up to the orcs randomly? Uh, I don't know, but I thought it was funny that the orcs just casually were like, we're gonna break out now and kill you. <laughs> it's like, yeah, oh, you can do that? Now, I guess. Yeah, the form in Apparently. which that they had them captured was just, they're in like a little zone and they're told to behave. I think that's it. Is that meant to be them hiding. demonstrating how much powerful they are now? There's no sun. Well, there like, is the sun still at this sun. point's already been blocked out. <laughs> it's still here but a little the sun bit. Is well, yeah, to be but they out, direct so they're sun. They're pre so... it. Yeah. All right. Again, yeah, maybe like... the orcs improve. Yeah, they get a boosted power level. Also, uh, they show. See this guy here near the center of the camera. Oh, oof, look at that. Boom. 
Boop, boop, and vaporized. <laughs> no, he just does the weird tism. He's like, oh, no. Um, with a volcano just fully launching to that degree in front of these people within that distance, I was just like, so all of you are dead. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's it's how that over. works. Yeah. Especially in this day and age, you ain't got... You, this ain't 2012 where you John Cusack in your little car and you can just escape the entire situation, okay? <laughs> Doomed. And there's no it's cover because possible, yeah, I'd believe there's that. There's nowhere to hide except if there's like a cellar, and even then, like you're not going to be having a good time once the smoke, because it's the smoke that's the big problem for you, really. Like all of this is bad, but once that smoke reaches you, like yeah, you're done. Got to breathe. It's over. You got it. Yeah, at the end of the day, you got to be able to breathe. That's right. Airway, breathing, circulation. Well, this is one bit right here that I was like, uh, if you can see, that's Theo near the center of the camera. See him there? That like detonates and look at him in reference to this. It's like, oh, he's fucked. That's just that's annihilate him. And then you get another shot that's here, and he's like, whoa, that was close. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, that nearly hit the queen as well. By the way, and Elfman. That would have been so funny if like one little comet just wiped out Theo Elfman and Queen Regent and Bronwyn. That that oh, that would be great. Oh, and Holbrand is we there as well. We have new characters, yay. Reroll on new characters. Yeah, maybe they're the best. To be all okay. right. yeah, Why um, does he still have no expression about what's going on? I don't know. Look, same with her. Same with Galadriel. This, She's come this... out and said something really stupid, though. This was her moment of peace. She was just exhausted, and this gave her a moment of peace. What? Wait. Wait, sorry, yeah, what? I can get a quote if you want. It's amazing. Yeah, please do. <laughs> please I need do. to know now. <laughs> A moment of peace. <laughs> like, I have questions. <laughs> By the way, this is not something you want to be seeing. This is one of those moments of like, ooh. Ooh, ooh. I should... I need to leave. I need to run. I you see, you see the old man to the left there who's who's heading towards us? That's a, that's a good move. You see the people He's to like, the fuck, right fuck, who fuck, are fuck. running towards the smog? <laughs> uh, that's a bad move. That, that That's because they don't actually know what's in front of them. That's a big old green screen. They have no idea. Nobody told them while they were filming, I guess. So he's just sprinting into the fucking smog. That's, that's what you do. It's vaporizing everything. What are they going to do to justify this? I told you I... they'll have, she'll be a little dirty. But like, do they understand, am I to believe that this is no, just a magic, me, a magical explosion that does, that is actually less harmful to you than a real person? Like if a real, because in a real world volcanic eruption, if this um, happens to you, you it, it's, that's it. It's it is over. an evil volcano, so that they'll freeze rather so than So it'll be less, way. it'll be less violent and dangerous and potent. A friend of mine who's a big old fan of uh, Lord of the Rings was Caps Lock ranting to me after seeing this episode. Um, and one of the things was he just sort of went on a tangent about how fucking bad he thinks Morvith Clark is at acting. And um, <laughs> I don't blame him. What am I supposed to draw out of this expression? I actually have no idea. Well, she's, a she's awake. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, stuff. well, some people can sleep with their eyes Something open, keep... like Gandalf. I, I guess I don't. <laughs> that I don't was know me what... during half the show. Mm. It, I don't it know. doesn't really juxtapose with the, the quote. I think because I think I saw the one that Disbury retweeted, and like you juxtapose what she chat, says. Yeah. yeah, juxtapose what she says there with the expression on her face here, and see how much of that you picked up. Wait, so what is? Have we got a quote we can read out? Uh... Yeah, it's in the. Yeah. She was. Utterly spent and so exhausted and so regretful that she's completely immobilized and almost is kind of grateful to have a moment of peace. I think she's just utterly uh, paralyzed by guilt, fear, rage, and thousands of years of it. Guilt. So, so like I didn't, I didn't get any of that. Guilt, fear, rage. <laughs> the, the crazy thing is that uh, before this is what I mean about listening to actors talk about this shit. I would have said best faith interpretation that she thought we were on the verge of finally getting the victory she's always wanted, and then she sees this, which annihilates everything. And this is so this yeah. is like one of the worst she's moments for ever and she's absolutely frozen by it. Uh that's the best faith interpretation I'd have. But she's just I added this whole dumbass one on top of it, so Well, I think that the best faith one is is the only one that can work. That this is a complete moment of resignation, essentially, of dread. Oh well, I guess she could have twofold, right? Either dread or resignation. But it would probably be dread, right? Like on the cusp of victory, it all falls apart. And you, you so, failed permanently. Why would you permanently. walk into it? 
Well, I, that's what gets I, me. I, yeah. He's dead. I, I, He's so dead. Well, everybody <laughs> is. I don't know how. I don't. I, I, is because people are chatting, memeing like, "Well, it's evil, so it's not hot." It's like I guess. <laughs> I guess I have to <laughs> presume that that's the way that it works in this show because it's over. I, 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 but, but from like a pure visual storytelling standpoint, what are the, what do the writers actually think I'm meant to believe here? Because when I watch this, it's like, oh, is that the end of the show? <laughs> like, that's it. They lost. Um, and got consumed by a, no a giant cloud of No Numenorians are going ash. home. Absolutely none of them. Nobody's going home. It's over. Even the ash doesn't make sense because ash is black, but. In the, all the trailers and stuff, that whole scene where she's covered in red... That's this. That's the next yeah, episode. She, so, right. so I just realized from that, that, that preview Galadriel. image, she's going to be this, that scene. I remember seeing clips of that shit before. She's going to be in red soot for everybody, basically. Right, but how, can you... how is she breathing? How can she breathe? How It's so unreal. Why? And there's, I know that the writers and directors will be like, this is Lord of the Rings. It's a magical world. It's like, yeah. shut up! I know it's... <laughs> I, I know it's... Excuse for I know everything. it's somewhat... I, yeah, like, I know it's the Lord of the Rings, but, like, I presume that when a f***ing volcano erupts and you get blasted with ash, like, that that's not gonna be- you're not gonna be okay. No, 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 no. Elves, 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 you elves work to tell me they're magical. Like, 1300 degree Fahrenheit, the elves can take that, because that's how they're made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that whole Meteor type. Man scene with the Hobbit, where she falls in and goes, Oh, this is cold. That might just be, the, like, their setup for this. So. Every, everyone's beaming about it. I would not be surprised if they, would, they think that's so clever. Why would somebody watch this and go like ten out of ten? I don't know what it is that would be cool to them about this. Like, they oh, want to Mount get Doom. a job at Amazon. In the future. Is that it? Epic. Like Mount epic, Doom epic, 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 tragedy, epic yeah. tragedy. And you have a lot of money, and there was a fight scene, a big action scene that wasn't very good. I guess I just don't see. I don't see how this could be fun for anybody. That that the mortal was created because like what was the guy's name the uh, crazy old man put a sword in, in a little <laughs> hole and then a dev and then mount doom was created well, like like this is why what I mean would about anybody this... be happy about that like they if they went to watch sing. return of the king and then there there's mount doom and you're like ah yeah i remember when the old man <laughs> put the sword in old the man waldrick <laughs> <a> legend <laughs> crazy old man waldrick about him that the men will sing songs about him forevermore. The song of old man. You'll be an orc the hero. Song of old man. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, that's that's the thing that baffles me about this whole fucking show. It's insane. The first five hours, and I, I'm legitimately trying to like be of some level of fairness here. Is like summarize them stories. Like the Harfords. Guy falls out of space. He's chilling out with our main character, who's a part of a community that are trying to migrate. That's it. Full done. Flash All of it. There. Dwarves. And it's like, well, uh, they were mining really deep, and they, they've come across Mithril, they've discovered it, and uh, it's a bit awkward because it cost them a few uh, mining areas, it's like they're not sure about it. Okay, elves. Uh, they, they're having trouble, they're losing the, the light of the Eldar, and uh, they, they might need Mithril to sort that out, they've started an alliance in terms of building some stuff with the dwarves. Okay, um, the Southlands? Yeah, well, uh, the orcs are attacking them, um, and so they went to the Watchtower to hide out. Okay, and bear in mind, I'm describing the first five hours. It's like, right, so what else we got left now? It's like, uh, Numenorians. Well, I guess Galadriel the Numenorians. She is trying to hunt Sauron. She is almost sent away, but then she decides to come back, and she convinces the Numenorians to go to the Southlands and attack the orc incursion that's there. That is, that, is that it? Have we done, is that everything? And then, yeah, and then it's like, and then in episode six, what happens? Oh, just like Mount Doom gets created. Yeah, just Mordor is, what, is you know is, is, Mordor has an origin is point. Now like we have two big isn't battles. That insane? Five. We had five episodes where like it, we wasted so much time, and then in episode six, it's like, oh yeah, Mordor and Mount Doom. <laughs> like like crazy. they realized they had to catch up, what? and things had to happen again. Leaving the docks of Numenor, and at the end of the next episode, the war has been completed. Like. What yeah. do you mean? The war has been completed, and then, no, it wasn't. Everything goes horrible, and now we got Mount Doom and Mordor. <laughs> like, we are racing! Like, in episode six. Yeah. <laughs> look at this, look at this repeating, like, this is, this is the experience of watching this show. <laughs> 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 Just standing there as you're consumed by this cloud of death.
How can she survive this? How can anybody survive this? How Surely is she the force of that as well? Like, that oh yeah, you alone would take. There's, there's so much part. physics here, like temperature, the lack of oxygen, as you just said, even just the blowing away of what's happening here. It's showing us that all of the, the, the other objects this is plowing through, the buildings, the fences, the grass, it's all getting annihilated. There's, there is electricity in this thing. Like, I, I don't see... It has its own weather systems. I don't understand how this... And getting totally still. They want to be like, how... In, did, did they want to bait that she's died from this? And then be like, she made it, everybody. And that's like a catharsis moment for the audience to be like, oh, thank goodness but our I mean, hero didn't how die. Could how, possibly, can how can you bait that Galadriel died? Because well, they're, they're a special yeah. kind if of people, goes, okay? Because the people who like this are dumb. Well, do they not know yeah. who she is? And that no. she's very much... is not dead. <laughs> it's a different Galadriel. I was about to say, do we really believe uh, this right. is Galadriel after everything we've seen? <laughs> well, right. <laughs> who is yeah, this imposter? Well, yeah, because I, I guess we <laughs> haven't talked about it that much, but, like, this isn't... This is, like, not tethered to Peter Jackson's, like, Lord of the Rings at all, right? Like, it's not even continuity-wise. Well, is it meant to be? I think it's yeah. meant well, to be. Is it? Not it's not allowed to be like legally connected to it, but as it's all in the same universe and it's all meant to be canon, yes, oh, it should I be. guess because because I've been watching this like this ain't no, this is just like totally different. It's like totally not connected. Um, I mean, they, they keep doing those those callback, very overt callbacks to those films, including stealing some lines. Sort of oh, sure, that word. I I guess it's it's more so that in no official sense, in you know, in the sense that like um. Disney Star Wars like is the sequel to the original trilogy, as upsetting as that might be, because you've got you've got the same actors, same continuity timeline directly, and and like the studio that created it is the studio that owns all of it. Whereas here it's like, uh, you know, like nobody who made the original this except like Howard opinion. Shaw is involved. You know, it's very easy to divorce it. Yeah, I've been treating it basically in my head well, like yeah, this is not connected to films. I actually said like films. the first time it became clear to me that it's actually annoyed me more than ever is seeing Mount Doom being activated. It's just like, ew, get the yeah. fuck away from me. Yeah, <laughs> for, for for everything that we've seen so far, there's a level of like disconnect that you can have. But here it's yeah. like, no, I no. Calling shit. her Galadriel is one thing, but she's so unlike her and doesn't look anything like her. So I'm just like, it's fine. I can I can just ignore that. Elrond, same deal. I I you're not him. It's fine. None of that's going on. And it's like Mount Doom is just a big old volcano. It's kind of hard for me to be like, <laughs> you don't look like volcano. <laughs> you, you yeah. Look um, Why would anybody be happy with this though? As like the way that it. I guess I guess it's. I guess I'm just baffled by the ten out of ten. Um, and I'm not well, like I being hyperbolic. So, like I just I don't understand what would be cool and appealing about any of this. IGN gave episode five a seven out of ten as well. So so I was starting from a relatively high mark. I don't even. Well, yeah, IGN when they do reviews for like media skew higher than. Video games skew higher for review scores than films and TV shows, generally. Like, if a game gets a 7, that's kind of the equivalent of if a film gets a 5 in a lot of people's minds. I think IGN does the same thing with their film reviews. They scale up big time. But even then, like, a 7. So, this is 3 points higher. This is a good, a good, you know, 30%. What? Wait, shit, I'm, I'm messing up my damn probabilities and statistics. We talked about this yesterday. They think it's markedly better than the last episode. Why? Better. Is it because there were fight scenes? 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 Is it because there were fight scenes and then Probably. Mount Doom exploded? Like, and that yeah, was... Yeah, I, I could believe really that, that it's all might this... actually be it. It could be this shot. This is... I could totally see yeah. other people being like, this was incredible, and be like, this why? Is this is cinema, yeah. This is what it was all leading up to. Galadriel standing totally still as a massive cloud of ash <laughs> just washes <laughs> over her. Her hair isn't even moving. Well, like, I looked it up. Her hair stands in defiance of death. In defiance of it, physics, yeah. They say it delivers exceptional action and character development. Oh well. god, that's that, yeah. We we could uh, read that. Yeah. Or, character a development, gorgeous yeah. emotional roller coaster that ends with an enormous blow to the heroes. You could say yeah, that an enormous <laughs> blow. <laughs> I all guess of the ground laying paid off. Apparently, that's another thing. So all of the preceding episodes was worth it because of this. Uh, episode, so one of their highlighted quotes, one of the highlighted quotes is episode six showed a masterful ability to weave all this character building into dramatic action. Sure. <laughs> That's all Which I can say to any of this. Just like, yeah, okay, sure. 
Uh, it's oh, good as well. Oh. It's, uh, nicely, it's finally portraying the orcs as being more complicated. Uh, and that's good because we need to have a proper conversation about what it's like to have races that are evil by nature. So right. that's another good thing. But I haven't watched the, uh, the extra credits. <laughs> and I haven't watched our coverage of the extra credits video. Well, they need to oh, do. Oh, I yeah. see my video on it. Yeah. This is that's their uh, their little blurb at the end, right? Their little statement. Master okay. ten out of ten masterpiece. The tides of battle keep turning in the thrilling and devastating sixth episode of The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, giving us fantasy television at its finest. Ugh, you want to vomit. Really? You just want to vomit. Really? Like I just don't... Meat. I, I, I know, right? Like, it's... I don't... I, I do not understand what the appeal would be for this show, given that there are, like, no characters in it. It's basically... Who are the characters in, in this show? Like, as in, if you sat somebody down who, if you sat down the person who gave it a 10 out of 10, it's like, can you just list me, like, in dot point form, five traits of Galadriel, the main character, just like five traits that she has, dot point them for me. Even that, I'd be curious if-, if They're all going to be negative. They are going to be negative. Because um, I would say arrogance if, then, is a huge one. Vanity, yeah. narcissism, like, there's- this Headstrong. I think um, that's not negative reckless. enough. <laughs> Headstrong reckless. needs to be a... Yeah, reckless is better, yeah. yeah. Negligent, maybe, yeah. Yep, I'd go with that. These are all very fair. Uh, socially inept, like she has no idea how to work with anybody. Yeah, and these are all unintentional. These are not the traits that they... It's just... And then once you go past them, it's like, well, if you went to a different character, could you list more than three traits that they have? Because they all generally have one. And even, like, that one is a very generic nebulous trait. yeah it's not a strong one like you're you're not a complicated character but you have this very strong trait about you that's you know interesting well, yeah. to watch like, one note was... isn't necessarily boring you know? elf man is basically his trait is protagonist that's like his trait he's like the generic hero man i will do that's what is right is. because being right is good and being good is right yeah He's, he's generic hero man. And then it's like, well, what about Elrond? It's like, Elrond is, I don't know, kind of like... A liar. Um, alive, well, I thought you just said. He's just alive. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's around. He exists. I just say that he's like, he's like generic elf man, basically. Like generic, he's, he's, he's What kind even of is like, a generic elf in this show? We learn so just, little um, about the elves. Like, kind of just all of them aristocrat basically like that's it like generic sort of arist aristocrat character who's p or, d posh maybe that's it he's posh that's all that's the only thing that i can use to describe him but you see, i i struggle <laughs> a lot of the time well, okay let's I, do an easy that's... one you can describe nori's traits she goes off the trail. Uh, absolutely, Fringy. Go for it. Fringy can do it. Oh yeah, she's uh, she's not like the other hobbits. That's 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 her. Well, what else? She basically, goes off the trail, she, right? She does things differently. Well, yeah, because the only she's thing that you would describe is she's basically that she's peppy. That's that's basically who she is. She's I just want to like beat and happy. Watch the show with cured, the actress yeah. and be like, I have been watching six hours of this. <laughs> do do you feel this is real good for Nori? Do you do you feel do it? I blame you or the director. Well, it's got to be the director, surely. Can you imagine, yeah. like the amount of characterization that is in every scene of Lord of the Rings and every interaction you have with everybody and everything, and it's just so frustrating. They couldn't learn anything. Hello, you just listened to a segment of the podcast Every Frame of Pause, or EFAP, hosted by YouTubers Mauler, Rags, and Fringy, and joined by a cycling variety of guests across the internet. They critically analyze media with exhaustive detail while pausing at every single frame. Subscribe to the EFAP channel and catch new episodes on Saturdays, as well as catch their smaller videos reacting to the latest and not-so-greatest movies and TV shows throughout the week. You can also subscribe here to EFAP highlights for the latest shorts, clips, and supercuts also up uploaded throughout the week. Links to all the relevant channels can be found in the description section below, as well as links to their communities on Reddit and Discord. Thanks for watching.